welcome back everyone to part three in this episode we're going to be um, working on the battle a little bit we're going to be touching it we're going to just set up the actual battle scene and then we're going to set up the transition to that scene so that's what we're going to be focusing on, on in this video so firstly let's create a new canvas layer as our battle scene so we're going to be drawing on top of our game when it comes to the battle scene so this is going to be called battle Oh, if I can spell, we're going to create a new folder for it. So control new, and we're going to call this battle scene. So anything battle scene related, we'll put it in this folder. So let's put it in here, save it and rename this to battle. Great. Now we have our battle scene. Let's go into our sprites. Let's find the battle thingy majiggy. And we're going to be using this guy. So let's just expand it. Not this one. We're going to be using this one. And I think that might actually be it. Yeah, we're just going to be using the empty one. So this is going to be essentially our background. Let's actually make sure it's all the way in the back. OK, cool. So the uh, scale should be 4.5. Awesome. So make sure it fits the screen. Let's um, lock this because this is our background. Now let's um, not do anything here. All we have is our scene set up, so that way we can come to this scene. So oh, I didn't mean to play, but all right. So now we're going to work on actually the transition. So let me actually show you what that would look like. So in our game, we're going to have some some these little areas that we pop in. And if we hit it, we want to essentially transition into this scene, the battle scene, right? And then we'll do all these other animations later. So let's close this and Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously we want to create an area 2D to actually interact with our player. So let's do that and create a collision shape for that area. And then let's create a new circle for it. So here's our area 2D. Now, what we want to do in this area 2D, first of all, is probably add a script to it. So let's call it Doki Mon. Uh, actually, we'll call it Battle Spawn. We'll save this and in here we will add a script. Let's add a script and let's put this inside of our battle scene and create it. And now we don't need anything, any of these, but what we're going to do is we're going to, right, we're going to auto load our battle scene. So what we, we're going to do is going to say variable battle equals pre load. And oh, it pops up right there. So we're going to auto load our battle scene. So there it is. And now what we can do is we can go to our battle scene, go to our battle spawn area 2D. We're going to go to the node. We're going to go to body entered because our character is a body. So it's just better to check for a body. I'm going to connect. Oh, actually, sorry about that. Hold on, hold on. Let's disconnect that. And we're going to make sure <clears throat> we connect it to ourself, the actual script that we just created and let's actually go to our character and delete this because that's not what I meant to do let's go back to our script for our battle spawn and in here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the body is our player so the way we can do this is we can actually just check to see if if the player the string player is in not is but is in body.name now the body that enters this area, we're going to check the name to see if it's player or if player is inside of that body. And if it is, then we'll do stuff. Okay. And that's stuff that we're going to do. We're going to simply instantiate the battle scene. So we're going to battle dot instantiate and give it to a variable battle dot temp or battle temp. And then this is the easy part. We're actually just going to say get parent and then add child. Now in this, Right after this, there's a few more things we want to do. First, we want to queue free because if we don't queue free, what's going to happen is it will keep making these scenes as long as I'm inside of the body. So I only want it to make one scene, right? Now, another thing we want to do is, trans is transition. So um, the way I'm going to do this is we're going to start by making a, a UI scene, another canvas layer. So let's go and create another layer or another node. And this is going to be called UI. And let's save this inside of our players folder. I'm going to capitalize it. There we go. And inside of here, we're going to have an animation player. 
I'm going to save this and let's put our UI here. Now from the UI, we actually want to access the, well, actually, actually let's make the animation first. Um, and we'll work on that in a second. So, um, let's go to the UI and let's go to the animation player. Now in our animation or in our UI, we want a panel. Now that panel is going to act as the black thing that goes you, you, that little circle. Now you might be wondering, well, how are we going to do that? Because a panel is a square. Well, we're going to be hacking a little bit. Now there's better ways to do this, obviously, but I'm going to be quote unquote hacking in the sense that I'm just going to make the panel seem round. So watch this. So I'm going to go to the styles and the override. I'm going to go to the panel. I'm going to go to the background color. I'm going to make it black, first of all. Now this is the fun part. I'm going to take the quarter radius and just max it out. Do 1024. And that's the max it can ever be. Now the circle, it has to be scaled properly. Otherwise it'll just be an oval. However, so we're going to have to do this manually in a second. Now let me just check to see I got everything right. So I'm not missing anything. Okay, great. Okay. So now in our animation player, we're going to have two things. Trans in, save this, and then trans out. Or transition out and uh, transition in and transition out. So the transition in will be the circle going up. And then transition out will be going this, make, getting the big circle to go back in. Okay. So let's keep working on this. So the first thing we want to do, you can kind of, uh, this is kind of up to you, honestly, but we want to essentially, we want to center the, the circle as much as you want. You can kind of put it wherever you want. You can test this out, but I'm just going to put it right there. Um, whatever. It doesn't really matter too much to me. Okay. Now I'm going to, okay, it looks like I did 32 and 32. No, I lied. That's the position. On. Nope. Here we go. Here's the positions. 50, 515, 512, and 320. Uh, and the size is going to be 32 and 32. So the transition in, the first thing I'm going to do is key those two things. Let's key those. And then let's go to visibility and make sure our visible is on here as well. So we're going to make the size here, position and visible. Now we're going to actually change the time here to 1.5, just because I found it's a little slower and, and kind of has a nicer transition. Now here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the panel and we're going to change the size to one four zero and the position is going to be, here we go. These are just the sizes I found nice. So that way, here, let's key this and I'll, I'll kind of show you what it looks like. So now it'll look like this. So we go from this to this. So that way the position kind of makes it seem as if it stays in the middle, because obviously when we resize this, it resizes to the left uh, top corner, right? So we got to kind of keep the position in the middle. Awesome. So now let's do the out transition. So now in the out transition, want to do the same thing. Let's make this visible here. And then let's, let's see, what size is it? B. The size is, uh, one, four, one, four. Then the position negative one twenty eight and negative one, whatever, whatever. So let's key those, <clears throat> key that, and then let's go here and we want to reset it. So let's actually change this to 1.5. Let's go to 1.5 seconds and we're going to change the sizing to 32 by 32. And let me just get the position. It's going to be 512 by 320. And then let's key that. Awesome. And then we're going to take the visibility off. Okay. So now we have transition in and then transition out. Now we have a problem. 
which I'll, I'll show you in a second and we'll have to fix it. So I did this intentionally so that you kind of see the, the way that debugging happens. So now we want to figure out how are we going to do this? So, okay, first of all, we want to get access to the animation player. And the way we can do that is we can actually just drag this in and then go over here and say slash animation player and type it in manually. So now we have an access to that animation player. And now what we can do is we can say dot play trends in, for example. Okay. And then we can actually, instead of, there's a few things. Okay. So what we want to do is we want the, we only want to add the child after the transit is done. So there's a lot of different ways we can do this, but one easy way to do this is actually just using await. We can say await get tree dot create timer 1.5 dot timeout. Now the 1.5 is just the time that it takes for transition in to finish. Okay. Now we have a few options actually. I think we can just say transition out. I think this might actually work. So let's try this. Um, transition in and then transition out. Okay. Let's see if this works. So let's play. Let's um, go to the, just make this guy a little bigger. Save this. Okay, let's see if I can hit it somewhere. Okay, I might not have saved, so let's just climb to the top left corner. There we go. <clears throat> All right, let's actually change the layering. So the layer of the UI has to be two, I think. Let me just double check that. Yeah, it has to be two. So the, the reason what that happened is that the animation didn't finish because the battle is also a canvas layer. So it just put the battle on top of our animation. So let's try one more time. Here we go. Awesome. There we go. That works. Um, okay. So that bug that I was talking about, I lied. Um, you can actually, instead of the transition in and out as two separate things, you could actually just have it as one long uh, animation. So have it three seconds and then transition in for the first half and then transition out for the second half. So that's also an option. Okay. Let's actually do this. So in the reset, let's actually have this as the auto load. And then in the visible, we'll turn this off. So it'll automatically make our panel uh, invisible. So now when I play, the panel won't be in the middle of my screen. Also, let's add a few more things. One, one last code of one last piece of code. We want to add get tree. We'll put this right here. We're going to say get tree dot pause is equal to true because we want to pause our tree. Now we'll do this in the next video actually, because it's not very important right now, but now we'll be able to see this. Ooh. Okay. Well, obviously that's not going to work because now what we need to do is we need to go to our UI and go over here and say process always. And then we also, to make this seem more realistic, we're actually gonna also go to the animated sprite. I don't know which one we have to do it for, so I'm just gonna do it for all of them. We're gonna go to the animated sprite. We're gonna set the process to always. We're gonna set the process to always on the tree and for the player. So now let's go to the top right. Now it'll keep playing that animation, even though I'm paused. Now you can set the animation to, well, actually we can do that. Let's one last piece of code. Let's do this ourselves. Let's go over here and we'll say, let's add a function in our player. This is going to be kind of a um, funny thing to do, but we'll go over here and we'll say function play idle. And then that way we can actually just play idle. And now, what we'll do is we'll go to our battle uh, thing and we'll say, get the player and then dot play idle. So now it'll look like this. Now he plays idle the moment we hit it and that's it. We've pretty much done the full transition. Cool. So let's, um, that's pretty much it for this video. But first, before you click off, this is important. We're going to take our battle spawn and we're going to actually save branch as scene. And we're going to save this in our battle scene and we're going to rename this to spawn. battle spawn like that. And that's it. And there's going to be a reason why we do this later, but, um, you'll see much later on. So let's actually make this smaller, close that. 
and let's move this kind of right next to our player so we can test this more later on. Awesome. That's pretty much it for the transition. Um, in the next video, we will actually be working on the battles and getting everything set up. Um, I think we'll probably be working on the scripts first. So that'll probably be our first step. And then we'll move on to the actual um, battle systems and stuff. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned to check this out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.